Tell us both of you Most of the time, it's a huge compliment to say this game is so realistic. But yep. sometimes, real Agreed. isn't the best goal. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 realistic gameplay mechanics that suck. Starting off with number 10. All right, so before we'll talk about it, you might have seen already, um, they will talk about... GTA San Andreas, and I believe that it's especially the remake one. Picking up trash and doing menial jobs, like in No More Heroes 1, or Shenmue, or Mafia. For I most of us, playing games. video games is a form of escapism for our mundane lives. <laughs> we get to do these fantastical, exciting things that would normally Ooh, be Skyrim. completely impossible nice. in our day-to-day. -day. And there's tons of games out there that are simulation-based, like American Truck Simulator, or the various yep. farming simulator games. And these games aren't fantastical, really but they're still the good, and they have simulator. mechanics that keep players engaged. They're and the a certain simulator. version of real, so to speak. And that's, that's really not nice. what we're talking about here today. What we're talking about today is stuff like picking up garbage in No More Heroes 1, where you're just wandering oh, nice. around a barren open world, picking up Why trash, like, because there's trash around, like, people littered, and you're cleaning. You know, yeah. the thing that you're supposed to do instead of play video games, clean your room, you're entering a virtual world. What do you mean? Why, why, why the hell is he complaining about? Yes, even virtual worlds need to be, be clean what do you mean have you have you played a game that the streets aren't clean come on world to wander around and Why do would you for fun <laughs> or <laughs> shenmue's like forklift job like in all seriousness that forklift job is hilarious i remember when shenmue came out and i got it i was like ah it's so realistic this is amazing for like a minute and then <laughs> I kept playing it. I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to beat this game. I stuck it out and I did beat Shenmue and I was disappointed by the ending of it. And I still am, despite the fact that I've beaten two more Shenmue games, one of which was supposed to be the yeah. actual ending. It's um, happening. It's or happening like, a lot. Uh, it's happening a lot for, for games that they are playing games. It's happened to me. It's happened to me with the game. Um, Yakuza Like a Dragon. Um, didn't really happen to me entirely just like it happened to him but you know i played this game uh the game mechanic the the turn based game mechanic that i don't like it's something that i really had to work hard to keep going playing the game because i don't like turn based games um but the story was good and it was very good so it was worth it at the end but yes yeah, sometimes you play games you finish the game you say it suck and then you say, all right, but there's another one. So let's play this as well. Also, the other one I said was Mafia. Lot. Moving the boxes back and forth in Mafia. I don't know. I was actually like getting Shenmue flashbacks when I was doing that. I was like, really? You're going to make me move boxes? All right. The bo boxes, by the way, uh, remind me of GTA San Andreas. Uh, when you need to steal guns from an old man. This is a video game. They're just brain dead and... jobs. They require like no brain power to accomplish and they seem like they just take forever. I will say um, Shenmue's probably the worst to all of them. The trash thing in No More Heroes and the box thing in Mafia, they're both like one-offs. The forklift job, oh my God, does it go on forever. Yep. There's also wanting to add dress. some realism to a game and then there's stealing adding gear, a job the, that you don't uh, actually get paid Sam. for except for you have yep. to do it to progress the game, adding that to a game. That's what the Shenmue thing is. And number nine is being forced to obey the traffic laws. Now, oh, Mafia, yeah. oh. we're mentioning again. Damn it. Oh, damn it. Um, Yakuza 5. Yakuza 5. You play as Kiryu Kazuma in one of the cities. And you play. You don't have to do that, by the way. It's a, it's a it's a uh, it's a side mission. It's side it's, it's a side story because you get a lot, and you need to play a taxi driver. Uh, but I it was it was annoying because you really need to uh, follow the rules. But on the other hand, on the other hand, you learn how to drive in Japan. So that was interesting and frustrating at the same time. 
in here, but there's uh, the getaway as well, which is actually even more strict. When Grand Theft Auto 3 came out, there was just something so fun about how you just drive around and do whatever you yeah. wanted. You could drive around this living, breathing city it as a and ignore the traffic laws because you were a criminal. A Crime is fine by your standards, and traffic violations aren't real crime. Of yeah. course you're going to ignore the traffic laws. And after that, really most open world games stuck to that formula. Basically oh, okay. anything goes as long as you're not running over a ton of civilians or bumping into police cars. It's whatever. A couple of games bucked that trend, though, like the original Mafia, where you could get pulled over for speeding. Like, it wasn't that bad. It was a speed limiter button and going too fast in those old 1930s cars just usually nice. led to you losing to control of the I car. This. I've never driven why one of those I, cars, but I assume it's because Mafia? of a more accurate physics simulation with the way that Mafia's reputation is. The getaway on the PS2, though, that game is strict. There is no speeding. Running red lights is a big no-no, and you have to stay on the right side of the road. And when I say but the right side of the road, I mean the left side of the road because the game's in London. And honestly, the game, for its time, surprisingly realistic. So Another PS2 game yeah. is kind of obscure <laughs> that was actually worse about it than the getaway was Steambot Chronicles, which you didn't even get the option of avoiding traffic. You wanted to go anywhere in town, you just lined up. Nobody likes traffic. It's one of those necessary evils you have to accept in modern life, but video games are not modern life. They're a virtual world where you can literally program... I disagree. I heard things about World of Warcraft that are really real life and, and and let's talk for a second about about eve online i mean people get people are actually criminals in this game and they are and it's hard to you know it's hard to point them point them out as criminals it's crazy someone paid a lot of money for a spaceship i mean a lot of money above one thousand dollars on a spaceship and a bunch of other players decide to group up and steal that spaceship i mean that a thousand dollars in real life and they are pirates in this game and they can they take they they steal his boat his spaceship and sell it to others and split the the money i mean it's it's online but it's theft i mean they they stole i mean it's crazy of course it is i it to do anything and number eight is uh cleaning up is there anything more miserable in life than having some free time to yourself and you go oh gotta clean it's a mess in my house oh, nobody a, a likes chores i mean like it's in the name chores that word means let me look it up an unpleasant but necessary task really that's the meaning of chore so they toss really? some chores into the game for you <laughs> an right. unpleasant but, but necessary, necessary task like in a task. virtual world <laughs> where technically nothing actually has to be necessary and is intended to be pleasant on at least some level <laughs> like most games just keep things clean for you because why would you want to think about that but there's a few games out there that make you spend time cleaning like okay I'm gonna give it to Power Wash Simulator for making that fun. Power Wash, yeah. however, yeah. in real this life, one, this is, game is very satisfying, just, and the game does a better job so making calming. it satisfying than real life, even. Yeah. Okay? I'm talking about tedious. But it makes it easier, you know? It's a game, and all you do is pointing, at, point, pointing things out with a mouse, and just, you know, it, someone else do it for you, so... Of course, I mean this when when you do this like that, it's fun. Cleaning like simulation games that force you to clean up, like any given sim yes, in a sim game. Sim, They're so total slobs it. that can barely the, keep the themselves clean, let alone clean up after themselves. They sims, leave dirty the plates, sims. they leave garbage, they break the oven Cleaning and the up, toilet. Up I don't even want to know what size turds are coming out of these guys. And it's up to you to force them to actually clean up after. Like you have to basically parent an entire town of adults. What are you or doing even in the, the recent Cult of the Lamb, where you're hapless little cultists uh, just poop everywhere yeah at least the sims like back up the all right amanda if you're still here you need to tell me 
Is you right about Kotal or the lamb? Toilet, and you we have to, to fix the me. toilet. These guys just poop everywhere. And the more poops lying around, the more likely your followers get sick and die. Do you like it? And uh, the, at first, the yes, only way that you can deal with like is running around and this? picking up poop. You're the cult leader. Shouldn't you be able to force some other cult it's member to do it's that for you? Yeah. Apparently not at first. I can use that to grow my tomato. Don't call it poop. And number seven is the run meter. Hoo-hoo. Nobody can move like most video game protagonists. Like the Doom guy. Uh, he can run yeah. at like 100 miles no, that, per hour that, that all day and all night. And no. he carries around like eight guns while doing it. Some of hell. those guns are of unrealistic sizes too, to be frank. For most of us, trying to move around like that would leave us exhausted after... <laughs> I'm going to say an hour, but I, I think I'm being a little kind to myself here. Like, Too being kind, able to sprint around like a madman is just fun. I enjoy doing With it because no I can't in real life. I can sprint like a madman for, you know, about as long as a video game protagonist can in one of these games. Like, the Grand Theft Auto games are pretty infamous for this. You can only sprint for a few seconds before your guy gets yeah. all winded. It's annoying, but, like... I yeah. want to give the, probably the best example with the first Evil Within main guy. He, he moves at a kind of brisk walking speed, but when you start running, it's like leisurely. He's not like fast, but he's also really not in shape because after Ooh, like faces. a second or two, he's like wheezing and about to keel over. I think Sebastian is probably not in great shape, but it is a mechanic that's pretty annoying. And number six is realistic jump mechanics. Like, one of those essential elements in video games, jumping. Like, video games have a very, very long history of using platforming. Amanda, if you're here, uh, they've just shown uh, Mario. I gotta ask, did you know that Mario is a killer and a murderer? This will be um, on my TikTok soon, but yeah. To introduce some kind of a challenge to an otherwise normal looking place. And to be clear, most video- Yeah, well, apparently the- Apparently this is a story of the- uh, You want me to tell you this now or um, maybe to see it? Because if you if you wait to see it, it will be up in about an hour. Maybe, a li maybe, maybe more, but today, later today game characters have a vertical leap that makes Michael Jordan so you'll look wait. You know silly. What? You'll Most wait. games that include jumping at all give you a pretty generous jump height, along with completely impossible things like double jumping or being able to change direction midair. I'm looking at you, Sonic the Hedgehog. But some games try to be a little more realistic. Instead of being able to jump like you're on the moon, yep. games like Morrowind, Morrowind make it so you're capable of a little hop at first, if that. Uh, a lot of the Souls games, even more brutal. Uh, like, you can only yep. jump after running start, for instance, and then you barely get any air the worst of all are the jumps where you can't control your trajectory obviously having air control oh, yeah. makes no sense at all it's but it's frustrating game, to have a game like castlevania where you're about to jump directly into a bottomless pit and you just can't do anything about it there's tons of games out there with just wimpy as hell jumps and while they're much more realistic than the alternative it's a lot more fun to have a good vertical yeah and number five spending time with games. friends now, that doesn't sound like a bad mechanic, right? Spending time with your friends in oh, real life depends. is awesome. But in video games, it's it's a chore, an unpleasant but necessary task, but only necessary because the developers made it so. Yeah. Uh, for our example here, I want to talk about... There are some games that you have to spend time with people. Um, you've got it in GTA 4, which uh, maybe this part of a GTA game. Uh, you got it in GTA 4, I remember. I didn't like it, and I'm not talking about the uh, the bowling bowling game. A Grand Theft Auto 4. When you're just cruising around doing missions, causing chaos, like this is a great game. All Grand Theft Auto games are. But then your cousin Roman calls and he's like, "Hey, yeah. Nico Bellic." I mean, he sounds kind of like that, but not not that bad. The Bellic cousins are here oh, in the land dear. of opportunity, and we are making trouble for any fools who get in our way. Game. 
if you say so. I do say so, man. Anyway, you got to stop everything and go play this tedious bowling yeah. game for 10 minutes before you go back to doing, you know, well, the things you're optional. playing the game for. And if you blow them off, it pisses them off, which makes your friends less likely to help you. So you got to go, even if you don't want to. It's like being invited to a party that you'd rather not attend, but you're obligated to for one reason or another. And that's I used to too close to real life. Yeah, don't invite me to anything call, ever. I'll nope. come over when I'm good and ready. All right. <laughs> yeah, at least in, in Grand Theft Auto 4, there's a workaround, though. Just answer the phone and agree to do whatever they want and then ghost them. For some reason, they don't get mad at you for that. Uh, oh, but don't nice. do that in real life. It really it does not make people happy in real life. Yeah. At number four well, is realistic. By the way, Grand Theft Auto 4 is a uh, 2008 game. It's an old game. It's uh, how long it's been. We are 2022. It's 14, 13 to 14 years. I don't know. I'm bad at math. I'm bad at math. Like rain Whoa. effects. So in most games, rain is just an environmental effect. Not really anything more. Doesn't have an effect on your gameplay. <laughs> Makes things a little harder to see, maybe, depending on how heavy the rain is. But hey, Breath of the Wild, right? Rain has got a whole bunch of negative effects in that oh, game. Nice. Like, but hey, that, but you got a torch. Nice. No, you don't. You got a, you got a fire that's not under something. Yeah, no, you don't. But the fire stuff is very secondary compared to how big like of a problem idea. climbing be, becomes. You know, Normally, you can climb to play uh, the game just about knows. anything in this game. Dying. But when it's raining, but it's usually too slippery to climb anything. Climbing is one of the primary ways you get around, too. So it's something you want to be able to do all the time. But when it rains, you're pretty much stuck. All you can do is either try to wait it out, find a place to rest, which, by the way, easiest way to find one is fires. And like I said, fires, unless they're under something, are going to get put out by the rain. So there's way less of them. And rain takes a long time, so a nap is probably the best way to do it. It's realistic, sure, but it's a drag. Like, especially if you're halfway up a mountain, it starts Deal raining. With it. It's like, ah! You're gonna go right back down this mountain. Thanks, Breath of the Wild. Cartoon-ass, cel-shaded Breath of the Wild trying to be realistic. At number three, <laughs> encumbrance, aka weight limits. This is a thing where a few games really oh, ever yeah, try to that, be realistic. Because like but I can a normal human why, can't why, carry around as much stuff as somebody in Fallout, Skyrim, or The Witcher Three. Like you end up hauling around dozens I mean, of it's weapons, not really hundreds realistic of crafting in ingredients. Some, most games, Somehow you have multiple suits of armor in your pocket, and your main not character really realistic, isn't even but breaking a sweat. Like all these games have some kind of weight limit, but it's really high, not realistic at all. Uh, but Demon Souls, on the other hand, uh, pretty restrictive. Unlike every other game that came. out, after it, this game actually counts all the stuff in your inventory towards encumbrance. It has a like a separate item burden meter that's maybe a little more forgiving than the equipment meter, but not forgiving. Like having so too many healing Skyrim. items can put you over the weight limit. And keep in mind, these things are called grasses. They're literally just a bundle of grass that you eat. And just having a lot of that is too heavy for your guy. It was an interesting Skyrim, idea, but the execution ended up being more annoying than remember. anything else. And number two, real time limits. Like in real nope. life, we're always on the clock. Life is a finite is thing. Annoying. Daytime is a finite thing. We I know. To, That's part of what makes is, video uh, games so relaxing. You're free way, to do uh, what you want, when you want, without having to worry about to deadlines or time limits at all. Oh, except for in a lot of games. <laughs> so, yeah, when they do it. I mean, I'm sorry, but time limits in game aren't the most fun parts. But they are very, very helpful with learning how to cope with the game uh, in a very efficient way. Because I played, let's 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 talk about uh, GTA uh, GTA Three. I the first time I played GTA Three was the remake one that they, that they made, and that was. That was really, really um, tedious. It wasn't. It wasn't easy, but I improved a lot. Although I need to tr try that uh, that thing, uh, that part. I don't know, six or seven times. A lot of times, maybe more. But I learned a lot. It made me much better in controlling the vehicle and you know, watching the surrounding. And yeah, I think it's a very good thing, the the time. But sometimes it's pretty bad, but I think overall, 
it's very helpful for you for the player to um you know be better yeah, it forces you to get better yes exactly include some form of time limit especially like one that covers the entire game it could be real nerve-wracking like dead rising is probably the most yeah. famous with its constantly ticking clock and brutal deadlines which force you to always think about how much time is left when you're getting around that mall the original system Just shock had a similar all. time limit too you have seven hours total to beat the game on the hardest difficulty so you have to move quick um another classic rpg Fallout one actually also difficulty. had a time limit 150 in-game days that's how much time you had to get the water chip and it's it's more than enough time, but just the idea that there was a limit kind of scared some potential players yep, out of playing the game. I that, remember that pretty that distinctly, plan. actually. People that, would read reviews and I don't know, there's a time limit on the game. Those are a few examples, but in general, time limits in games can really suck, especially when you just want to take your time and relax. And finally, at number that one is panic, panic mode. mode. So let's say one thing about what he said that I will... Uh... That, that I do agree when it the whole game I I I I entirely agree. With the whole game I entirely agree. Uh it's unfair to the player and nerve wrecking as it said and it just it's not that fun because let's say that you want to enjoy the graphics, you want to enjoy what you see uh around you. Um and it's actually it, it makes the uh the developers who work on a thing that most people wouldn't see wouldn't realize because they need to they, they need to buy the clock so in this kind of type type of games where the whole game is uh based on real time and you've got the time limit um that's that's really annoying unless 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 it's one of those old games like i stated earlier today um prince of persia the first prince of, prince of persia which was the first game ever to have a time limit uh you didn't have a lot to watch to see there um and you had two hours to finish it but that's okay in this type of games it's okay yeah that just seems anxiety inducing and not relaxing exactly and people want most people that play games want to relax, although most of them are getting anxious anyway. So, uh, time limit's pretty bad, but there's nothing worse in games that introduce this like loss of control or distortion of control. Like it's pretty rare, but when they show yeah, up, wow, rare. do they suck? Like Clock Tower Three, this I PS2 war game from way back of, in the day. Every time you get hit with a jump you know, scare change, or like a stalker gets close to you, the panic meter builds up, and when it fills up, and it always does, usually faster than you would like. You lose control of your character, and you have to watch helplessly as she flails around, totally useless for a few seconds, and either escapes long enough for you to try to regain control, or she just dies. It's basically a roll of the dice what happens when you go into panic mode, yeah, and it's actually, so actually frustrating like stuff, every time like, it happens. It now, it is possible the, uh, to adapt to this mechanic and get used to it, but it doesn't make the game fun. It's just a frustrating idea. Yeah, it's realistic that in a terrifying situation, most people would probably panic, but it's a video game. I'd like to be able to control the character that is an avatar for me inside the video game world. Watching them run around in circles like a chicken with his head cut off and then die, it's not fun. It just sucks. And I'll give you a couple of bonus ones right, too, bonuses. short ones. Oh, uh, but before the bonuses, I want to talk about this a bit. Um, <clears throat> when, it you know, when it comes to games that at some point, for any reason, uh, you need, uh, you have the, that moment of uh, changing the, uh, uh, that you losing control control in your character is, well, I, I, I actually enjoy it because it, it, it feels new. It feels like I need to learn a new tactic, a new thing. Um, but for me, I usually like it. Sometimes some games are um, changing the uh, your buttons if you are uh, uh, playing on keyboard or the control. It doesn't matter. Uh, they're changing your button. You're changing changing your control. You know, and I like that because just you know, uh, reverse controls and all that. I I enjoy it. Um, but. There are some cases I agree that it's just not fun to lose control over your character. Um, but
But in most cases, I, I enjoy it. In most cases, I enjoyed it. Uh, like realistic stealth mechanics, like Left to Live, which is just like ridiculously unforgiving, or Shadow of Rome, where you basically just get no information. You have to trial and error everything. Uh, another one's realistic damage modeling. Yeah, I don't like Like that. Deus Ex or uh, realistic difficulty in Call of Duty where a shot is going to kill you or you end up moving slowly because yeah, your legs are broken. Super limited fast travel. Like I I I'll say Red Dead Redemption yes, 2, but like, you know probably dozens of games with this and it's super irritating another one fall damage that uh i mean feels nope. as though it is tethered to me. real world mechanics yeah i know that this fall would hurt but don't make it end to me this is a game it doesn't have to be that real then of course there are escort missions that have a degree of realism at least in the context of the world that they're in like in dead rising or silent hill 4 games that aren't necessarily realistic themselves but the way that your escort sucks so much is pretty um, much how they know. would be in real life in those situations. I don't know my, what, what my opinion about that. Uh, and then there's this one, which I think is a really it's specifically a irritating one. When there's no mini-map or navigation assistance. Like, um, this is an, an advent in modern gaming. I don't gaming. hate I it. It's very good. I All understand. Right. So this, this is interesting because I thought about it at, at the beginning when I first played games. I started to play games where they don't have any mini-map or even a map. Um, just like uh, a Plague Tale, Innocence, and Requiem, with where you don't ha don't have a map, um, it's frustrating. Especially, it was very frustrating to me last week when I played the Plague Tale of Requiem. Um, last week, I don't remember. So, it, yes, it's frustrating, but it also um, return you to let's say a game like Elder, Sc Elder Scrolls Morrowind where you didn't have a map at all and it's an open world game it was really tough um, but I've learned to like it because I really get to see the area the, the surrounding more and enjoying the, the graphics more when I'm not busy at looking at one circle little circle at, at the left of the corner um or opening a map and um fast traveling everywhere although i do like the fast traveling feature it's awesome i enjoy it and i don't like those games that you need to unlock fast travels points i i don't like that i mean i like the idea that you, to do that you need to go there you need to see you need to investigate I don't like the fact that you need to do that <laughs> in general. And that having to figure everything out yourself has some measure of allure to it, but the more games you play, the less novel it feels. I'm looking at you, the sinking city. Uh, but that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you I like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great well. time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to Game enable ranks, notifications. Awesome. And as always, we thank you very much for watching. You're doing a really good job. Um, covering all these.